Good afternoon. This is Brother Ray Branch, Associate Pastor of Central Baptist Church here in Mount City, Tennessee. And we want to take this time to welcome you to a Wednesday afternoon broadcast. And thank you for taking your time to tune in and be with us today. Before we get into the uh, uh, verse today that we want to go over, we will give you a, a quick update. I know many of you have been praying for my wife and myself. Uh, my wife is home from the hospital. She spent a week uh, in the hospital because of the... Uh, uh, COVID, and she is back home now. She is on oxygen, and she'll be on oxygen for uh, for a while until her lungs recover, but we appreciate all the prayers. We appreciate our church family. Uh, words cannot express uh, uh, how much our church family has meant to us during this time. They've prayed for us. Uh, they, they've been there to help us when we uh, need anything, uh, bring them food by and things of that nature. So we appreciate our church family and love them very much. I can't wait to get back in church to, to see them again. And uh, as for myself, uh, at the time of this broadcast, uh, I went and got tested this past Monday. Uh, I started having some symptoms, uh, some congestion, especially in my head and my throat. So uh, I've not got those results back yet. I'm expecting them probably to come back positive, just to be honest. But it's nowhere near hit me as hard as it did uh, Diane. So we appreciate all those prayers, and we thank you today. Just continue to pray. God is good. Uh, we're going to praise him regardless of no matter what happens. God is worthy of glory, honor, and praise. And uh, he, he's good no matter what. So we want to always praise him, but we also want to thank him and praise him uh, when good things are happening as well as bad. But uh, he is worthy today. All right. We want to get right on into our, our thoughts today. And we're going back to the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms in chapter number 40. And this is a tremendous, tremendous passage of scripture in these 17 verses. There's so much in these. And uh, of course, the verse number one, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Many people, uh, they draw strength from that knowing that God is listening and God hears them. And then verse number two, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my foot upon a rock and established my goings. And a lot of preaching has been done from verse number two. And it's such a tremendous uh, passage of scripture, and we could spend a lot of time just unpacking these 17 verses, but we want to look uh, specifically at the very last verse. Now, if you want to break this uh, chapter down, we find that uh, this psalm is a celebration of God's great goodness uh, to the psalm writer. And of course, we know that it's a psalm of David. So as David is writing here, he's talking about the great goodness of God and how he treats his people. He's wonderful. He, he praises God for delivering him out of deep distress. And those really cover the first five verses. And then he takes occasion uh, to uh, speak of a work of redemption, and that's verses 6 through uh, 10. And then the remainder of the chapter, we find that he prays for mercy and grace, uh, not only for himself, but for his brethren. And verse number 17 is the verse we want to look at in our thoughts for uh, today. Listen to verse number 17 of Psalm 40. It says, But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer, Make no tarrying, O oh my God. When you think about that, verse 17 is it's an admittance that uh, of not only David's condition, he said he's poor and needy, but also of the omniscience of God towards us. God knows everything about us. There's nothing hid from him. There's nothing that the eye of God doesn't see. And David makes this statement that, God is thinking upon him. This should be of great encouragement to us as God's people to know that he thinks upon us. And that's what I want to talk about today. And I want to think on this thought. It's nice to be thought of. It's nice to be thought of. And as we're thinking about this, uh, you know, here in the last several weeks, we've been thought of quite a bit. We've been thought of by our church family. We've been thought of by our physical family. We've been thought of by our friends. And it's nice to be thought of. 
It's nice to be prayed for, but it's something special to know that the God of this universe, the creator of all, is thinking upon us. He's thinking about us. And, and that's that's the blessing. And he he's thinking upon us, not just as a nation. He's thinking upon us, not just as a church. He's thinking upon us, uh, not just as the world in general, but God thinks upon us as individuals. As individuals, he thinks upon us. And that is such a blessing today. So uh, let's, let's think about that today. It's nice to be thought of. And I want to give you just three things today, and we'll be finished. And first of all, I see the confession. I see the confession uh, that David makes. What does he say in the very first part of verse number 17? He says, but I am poor and needy. I am poor and needy is what David says. It's a confession of poverty. Now, this may be true in a literal sense. Uh, you know, we, we think about David and we say, well, David was king. David was king over all of Israel at one point. Yeah, but at also at one point, he was nothing more than a lowly shepherd boy. It's also true that uh, between the time that he was anointed to be king and the time that he was king, he was also a fugitive. He ran from Saul, and uh, he was a fugitive and an outcast, and uh, he was always on the run, didn't really have anything. So he knew what it was to both, uh, I guess like the Apostle Paul when he said, I know what it is to abase, and I know what it is to abound. David was the same way. He knew what it was to be poor and needy, he also knew what it was to be rich and not to have really want of anything. So, but when we think about ourselves, it's not just a physical. When he said, I'm poor and needy, I don't think David was talking about just the fact that uh, he was poor and needy in a physical sense. David was talking about he was poor and needy in a spiritual sense uh, as well. It's, it, you know, this is a confession that many do not care to make. Uh, you know, it's it's so natural for us to hide the fact of our poverty. Uh, you know, children especially when they're when they go to school, and children can be cruel. So uh, I've seen many a times, and and I certainly when I was growing up, I didn't have the the best of things, and. My mom and dad were divorced, and uh, my mother uh, was, I can remember her working uh, several jobs just to try to provide for us three children, and she didn't make a lot of money, and we had to have assistance and things of that nature, so I didn't have the best of things. I didn't have the best of clothing, and when you go to school and you have other children, and they're talking about name brand clothes and things of that nature, and sometimes you feel like you need to hide the fact that you uh, are poor. You need to hide the fact that you don't have what some of the other uh, children have. And even as adults, uh, we don't like to admit that. And we're uh, with, with poverty, a lot of times comes that sense of being ashamed. And, and there's no pride in that, it seems. And so we, we, try to, we try to hide that. But here David is, and David's not hiding that fact. In the spiritual sense, we are all poor. We are all needy. We are all broken. You know, you can have the finest things. I know there's a lot of people and they have money and they're pretty well off. But when it comes to spiritual things, they are poor and they are needy. And we all are at that point before we come to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Spiritually speaking, we are poor and we are needy. You know, it's so natural for us to, to try to hide poverty, but you cannot hide that from God. Whether physical or spiritual, it's hard to hide that truth. Some do not uh, make it, uh, for they don't know it. And that's the way, spiritually speaking, it's the same way today. We wonder why people don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because they don't realize just how poor and wretched they are. Have you ever heard someone say, you know, we didn't even know that we were so poor. We were so poor we didn't even know. We just thought that's the way things were. And, you know, spiritually speaking, there's a lot of people out there today, the reason they don't come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the reason that they don't uh, turn to him is because they don't even realize just how poor and needy they are spiritually speaking. But David here, he admits it. And that's the first thing we have to do is confess that we are poor and needy. Uh, David knows 
that he's poor and needy. And he wasn't afraid to confess it and say that I am poor and needy. Now, whether you recognize it or whether you don't recognize it, God knows all about it. Uh, that word poor in this particular instance means afflicted, greatly depressed. He said, I am needy. Needy means a beggar, one utterly destitute of seeking uh, help. They, they need that. And so he said, I am poor and I am needy. And the great thing about this is God knows and God has the answer. He, he says, but I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You know, a lot of times we can draw comfort from that. And that's what leads me to number two. Not only do we see number one, the confession, but number two, we see the encouragement. And the encouragement comes in two different ways. First of all, we find encouragement coming in the form of comfort. It is extremely comforting for a poor person to hear that some wealthy relative is thinking on him. You know, if I was extremely poor, oh, what an encouragement it would be to, to know that I suddenly have a wealthy relative and he's thinking on me. He's thinking of me. You know, unfortunately, that's the only, uh, they only think and they don't do anything more. But when you have someone that's not just thinking, but they're going to act upon that like God. When David said, I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You know, the president doesn't know my name. And I know right now it's a, tur you know, a turbulent time with, you know, we, we don't know for sure who the, who the president's going to be. And honestly, neither one of these men know my name. They don't know me personally. And, you know, help's going to come from God. I'm not looking to Washington. I'm not looking to a president for any type of help. Because ultimately, they, they can do, actually, they can do very little, and that's it. But God is the one that I need thinking upon me. And, you know, the president doesn't know my name, let alone think on me, but the king of all creation. Think about this. The king of all creation, the ruler of this universe, is thinking about us right now. If God always has us in his thoughts... Maybe we should keep him close in our thoughts as well. Think about that. If we're in God's thoughts as individuals, maybe he should be more present in our thoughts. So I see this encouragement comes in, in the form of comfort, but it also comes in the form of certainty. One thing is certain. If God thinks of us, then all is well. You know, we, we, I think about Jonah uh, chapter number one, verse number six, when Jonah got on board that ship and he was fleeing from the Lord, and the Bible says that God sent a great tempest, a storm. And the Bible says in verse number six, so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, old sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, and listen to what he said. If so be that that God will think upon us that we perish not. And that's exactly what happened. Once Jonah got up, God did spare those men. After Jonah was cast overboard, God spared the rest of them. How do we know if he thinks upon us? You say, well, I know the Bible says that God thinks upon us, but how do I know he thinks upon us? The same way we know anything about God, because of what he says in his word. It comes down to this. Are you going to believe what the word of God says or not? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. God himself says he thinks thoughts towards us. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has plans for you. He thinks upon you. Because of what he is constantly doing. He is constantly taking care of us. He's constantly being there for us. We are constantly in his thoughts. And then number three. I see the nature of God's thinking. The nature of God's thinking. 
I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Now, you need to note this. God doesn't think about us. He thinks upon us. That's, that's why I so appreciate the Word of God. And I so appreciate the King James. And I know people say it's hard to understand. It's not hard to understand. It's written on a sixth grade level. As a matter of fact, the, the King James Bible will force us to dive deeper in and study a little bit harder. But there's nothing in here by accident, not one single word. When the Word of God says, He thinks upon me. There is a difference between thinking about someone and thinking upon someone. There is a, a sense of awareness or of distance in thinking about someone. When, when children are at school, the mother thinks about them. But when they are seated at the table, she thinks upon them. You might say, uh, is thoughtful over me. See, there's a sense of, of nearness and affection in the expression thinking upon someone. That's why it's so important when, when the Bible says in the New Testament, it says that we should believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a difference in believing in or believing about and believing upon when we when we think about someone that can that conveys distance yeah you're aware of them but it's it's kind of a distant term i'm thinking about someone but when you're thinking upon upon there's there's a great significant difference in those two expressions in thinking about and thinking upon believing about the lord or believing upon the Lord. God's thinking is done while bending over us in love. That nearness. David said, I am poor. I am needy. That means that he has need of some things. He, he needs that help. And then he says, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Boy, it's nice to be thought of. But boy, to think about the fact that God, the creator of this universe, the one that spoke this world into existence, takes time out. And I think it's even more than that. I think it's even more than taking time out of what he's doing. I think he's constantly thinking upon us. And I know it just blows our mind to think about this because there are billions of people in this world. And yet he individually cares. He individually thinks. He individually loves each and every one of those individuals. We hear the expression, he loves me as if I was his only child. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I think you should believe that as well. Because he doesn't just think about you, he thinks upon you. That 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 love and that closeness and that nearness, it's good to be thought of. So I see when David wrote in this Psalm 40 and verse number 17, By I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. What a, what a blessing. What a comfort we can draw from this. Especially from that expression, the Lord thinketh upon me me. The confession, the encouragement, and the nature of God's thinking are all revealed in this one little verse. It's nice to be thought of. And on that note, we want to say once again, thank you so very much for, for praying for me, for especially praying for my wife. Um, 
she's going to be okay. It's going to take a little bit of time. She's got to eventually uh, wean herself off of the oxygen as her lungs become stronger and able to do so. And uh, I will say this, this COVID, I know a lot of people, they don't put a lot of stock in it. But you know what I've come to realize? Those that don't put a lot of stock and they say, well, the COVID's not that bad, that just simply means that it's not affected them or someone close to them. So it is real and you can get it. And yes, you may not get it bad, but there is that chance. I mean, I didn't expect when my wife got it that she would end up in a hospital for, for an entire week and me unable to be there with her. But God took care of her and God was there with her. I'm just saying it is real and be careful. Be careful. Use some precaution. It won't kill you to wear a mask and it won't kill you to take a little bit of extra precaution. And, uh, and it'll help others as well. So just remember that. But we thank you, church family. We love you. We can't wait to be back with you once again. And uh, within another week or so, we should be able to. So you continue to pray for us. And at this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We want to ask his blessings upon you today. And you may have a need in your life. And whatever that need is, we want to pray. And let's ask God to meet that need in accordance, first of all, to his will. And then as God shows us his will for our lives, pray God give us boldness to do what we need to do for his glory and for his honor. All right, at this time, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you and we want to praise you, Lord, for who you are. We want to recognize that you are our help. We want to thank you for thinking upon us. We want to praise you, Lord, for who you are. God, we just want to have a heart of gratitude. And God, we just always want to lift your name up, Lord. And we want to lift you up so that you would draw all men unto you. And God, we thank you today for those who have uh, listened to this broadcast. We pray that the Holy Spirit of God would be uh, instrumental in their hearts and in their lives. And God, we pray that whatever need they may have in their lives, that you'd meet that need in accordance to your will and according to your riches and Father, we just ask you now, Lord, that you would uh, bless, continue to keep your hand upon uh, our wife, and God, pray that you would just help her in her recovery. God, those out there today who may need a special touch in their body, we pray that you'd do that today as you've been the great physician. And God, we pray for those who uh, need a touch spiritually as well, that you would do that as well. God, we pray for our nation, and God, we pray for our churches and the men of God as they stand. And Father, we just ask you today, Lord, that you... Uh, would be exalted in all things. Help us live our lives in such a way that we'd bring you glory, honor, and praise and we'll not fail to give you the glory for it. For it's in the name above all names and the only name given whereby we must be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. We would like to ask you, uh, if you don't have a church home or you're looking for a church home and you'd like to come and visit with us at the Central Baptist Church, we'd love to have you there. Our service times at this present time are Sundays at 11 a.m., worship service, and 6 p.m., the worship service. And still not having Wednesday night services, just trying to be cautious. And uh, hopefully there will be a time when we can get back to some semblance of uh, normal. But uh, if you'd like to come visit with us, we're located in Mountain City, Tennessee, on 2430 South Shady Street in Mountain City. And uh, our brother Rick Thompson is our pastor there. I'm the associate pastor, youth pastor. And uh, I guarantee you'll receive a warm welcome from the congregation of the Central Baptist Church. Okay, we want to say God bless you. And until next broadcast time, this is Brother Ray Branch and praying for you and just asking God to bless you. And uh, as good day is our prayer until next broadcast time.